Hi everybody, Lisa over at iRepair iDevices and today in my workbench I have a Bose Lifestyle 5 unit. Uh, this client of mine found me on my YouTube channel and contacted me and asked me if I could take a look at uh, two of her units. It's uh, One of them is the, the this one here, the Bose Lifestyle 5 and then also the Bose Acoustic Wave which is a radio CD player. Now I already have that one fixed sitting off to the side and now I'm focusing on this one and I thought I would do a video on it because I believe I found the problem and I want to go over um, the reason of, of what I've preached in the past about why you need to replace uh, components with the required um, value that it's specified. So um, I just want to show you what it looks like. I already have it as, uh, disassembled, but I, I, I put the lid back on so you could see. So this is the Wave unit here, the Wave um, the Lifestyle 5. Um, it's a radio CD player. CD module sits over here. And also you can hook up a uh, tape, tape cassette player in the back here. So when we remove the lid, this is what the inside is going to look like. I already have the CD module taken off, set to the side. So the initial problem was, she says, um, over time, the screen started getting dim. Let me bring this back up here. Uh, over time, the screen started displaying dimness and the volume went down and then eventually would not turn on at all. So the first thing I look for when I start troubleshooting is I will remove the unit. That I, um, I won't turn it on right away. I'll remove the lid and take a visual of the insides. And what I'm looking for are you know, components that have burnt or some of the capacitors where you've, where you've seen that the tops have split open um, or water damage. So none of that appeared. So there's no visual damage to the board or broken traces. Again, nothing. Because I had one of these units come through and the power jack in the back here it was a broken solder joint. So that was all that one was and just tacked on a new um, couple uh, solder uh, tacks and was good to go. So it wasn't, this is, this is not displaying anything visual. So, um, so then my troubleshooting started with, okay, let's look at the simple thing first. Let's look at the, uh, power jack here, or the AC adapter. So now this AC adapter is rated at 12 volts output, 120 going in, 12 volts coming out. Now, a lot of times the voltage will vary on here. We're going to have a plus or minus. So, um, so that's why we want to make sure we're within the proper guidelines. So now on this particular one, uh, a lot of the uh, outlets, or I'm sorry, the barrels here will have their uh, polarity set differently. So this one, the center pin is the positive, and then the outer pin is the negative. So when I put this to the AC, because this is still AC coming in, um, it is sitting at, I believe you could see, turn my camera here. Not sure if this is going to show mirrored or flipped in my screen, but I will read what it's showing. It is reading 14.45 voltage AC. So I know we're at, we're getting AC voltage to this through this line to here. So now the next thing is, is it making, uh, is there voltage getting inside the board? So this is where you got to be very careful when you're working with this. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my over, overhead light. And I'm going to get this situated to where I'm going to take some readings here to show you the steps that I took to uh, find the fault here to make sure that, you know, we're getting voltage in the proper areas. So, all right, so the boards are leaning and I have these uh, connectors here. I can't disconnect them because they are soldered into the boards above. So, um, so when they're leaning forward, I know that there's a safe protection here that the two are not going to touch one another and short each other out. So again, I'm working with a, uh, with a live circuit here. So you gotta be very careful not to touch any of the metal parts here because you will get a good shock. So I have the AC power uh, being plugged into the jack here. Go ahead and plug that in. All right, let's go ahead. There we go. And now show you that it is not working. I'm going to hit the, uh, this is going to be the radio button up here and the CD and it should illuminate up, up at the screen here. So let me just uh, bring my camera up here, show you that it is not working. Uh, just try to hold this and so again, this is the radio button up here. Nothing's being displayed on the screen and and CD. So normally it would display a AM, FM, or then the CD. So nothing's being displayed there. So we know that um, right now 
is it turning on and the bolt it's just not turning this on or what but right now we know that it's not turning on in the sense of displaying any output so let me go ahead and just flip this guy over again being very careful not to touch anything metal so now i'm going to take some voltage readings all right so like i said we have 12 volts come or 14 14.45 volts ac coming in so i'm going to test some of the uh uh capacitors here now again got to be very careful and you got to test them in the orientation that they are just are are being displayed here so these barrel type uh capacitors are electrolytic capacitors so on one side we see like a grayish uh tone to them with some dash marks that's going to be the negative side so i'm going to put the negative probe on my multimeter on that side and the other side is going to be the positive the red and i'm going to take some voltages so depending on the circuit you're going to a lot of times measure both ac and dc okay and you got to be very careful not to short these two pins together because you definitely will cause more damage so this is where you need to focus on what you're doing and pay attention so i'm going to take a reading here all right so this is going to be a dc line all right. Let's see here. Let's see. All right, I got 16.32 DC volts, so we're getting power there. Let's go further down the row here. And now I'm going to switch the leads around because now we've got the positive on the outside here and negative going inward. So we're just going to touch that and we have 14.2 volts so again you're going to have voltage that's going to um, be different throughout the circuitry some voltage is going to be higher and sometimes it's going to be lower um, so I know I've got voltage coming out or going through the board and now I'm going to test these two um, voltage regulators um, because they're going to take input voltage and output it to other parts of the board. So this is where I want to see is it is it you know one getting input the proper input voltage and two is it now outputting to the uh, boards you know to the circuit that it needs to. So this left one here is a three pin voltage regulator. Pin one is going to be the input voltage. Pin two is going to be ground, and pin three is going to be the output. So uh, being very careful, I'm going to touch my probe on the ground and make sure I'm on DC voltage and then I'm going to touch the uh, input and I am showing 13.37 volts DC so we are getting input voltage now are we getting output voltage at this chip and we are we're getting 8 volts and now the uh, then there's another voltage regulator here on the uh, right side of it. Same thing. Pin 1 is going to be the input voltage. Pin 2 is going to be ground. And pin 3 is going to be the output voltage. So we're going to read the input voltage. Which is 13.88. And the output voltage. It should. This one should read about 5 volts. Which it does. 5.03 volts DC. So I know it, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. So at this point, I know we are getting voltage to the board and through the board. So the question is, why is it not getting to the top here? So I went further, uh, brought up my schematics because I have the schematics on this. And I noticed that I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here. We have several. Uh, let's see, can I zoom in? Oh, that's just doing that's that's the exposure uh, can I zoom in there we go all right so uh, we have several capacitors uh, electrolytic capacitors that run across the top here so I referred back to my schematics and I was going through each of these um, um, uh, capacitors here and I noticed on this one right here labeled C19 C19 according to the schematic should be 33 microfarads at 63 volts okay oh, let's zoom back out here um and the one that's used here is 33 microfarads at 25 volts so several of you could be asking well what's the big deal well when you're dealing with capacitors 
um, almost any component in a circuit, there's two things you need to follow, especially with capacitors. One, you must replace the value or use the value that is specified in that uh, circuitry. The engineers developed this, this uh, circuit and there's a reason why they chose 33 microfarads. So um, you never can replace a capacitor either higher or lower than required, all right? So it has to be 33 microfarads. Now, when it comes to voltage, this one requires 63 volts is the minimum. This one in here is 25. So now there are times where it's like, man, I got, I, you know, an example, let's say I got a 33 here, but I'm like, I don't have a 63, but I have a 100. I am okay to replace with the 100. You can replace the capacitor's value as voltage if it's higher, not lower, but it's either equal or higher. And um, this one is definitely lower. And what happens is um, this screen right here, bring this back down. This is a uh, VFD screen. This is not a regular uh, LCD screen. So this requires a little bit more power. And when you, when you have a, um, a capacitor here that is under rated with the voltage, it's going to deplete itself internally a lot faster to cause it to fail. Luckily enough, it didn't cause a combustible failure, um, but it did deplete its uh, electrolytics inside. Uh, now, again, there could be other faults with this unit, but I have to resolve this one first before I move forward. So this is where I'm at the point of seeing if, if my, um, my, my, uh, my, uh, what I'm thinking is wrong. I believe this is the only fault and I want to make sure that, you know, this is, you know, what I feel. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and change it. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh. Just lean the board up to the top here. Now I do have a 33 uh, microfarad, 63 volt capacitor available. So I do have one sitting here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my, uh, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna temporarily unplug the AC adapter here. I'm gonna plug in my exhaust fan here. So when I solder, it's gonna, uh, keep all the nasty fumes away from me so I don't breathe them in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the old component here, the one that is measured at 25 volts. And I have my solder iron already heated up and ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my wick here. I'm going to remove some of the solder. Now it is unplugged, so I know I'm safe here to work on this, so it is unplugged. Okay. Move that. Okay. And I'm gonna slowly just make sure the terminals are loose enough and Pull this guy out. There we go. This is the. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. 33 microfarads at 25 volts. And this is the one I'm going to replace it with to show you. 33 and 63 volts. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with, again, with these electrolytic capacitors, this side's the negative side, and then this side's the pl uh, plus side. So you gotta make sure the polarities match up to where the old one was taken off, because if not, you're gonna get a good zap. Uh, the board will snap, crack, and pop, and, and something you don't wanna happen, because you're just then gonna be making uh, more corrections down the road. So make sure the orientation is correct. So the negative is going inward. And I'm just gonna line up the two legs and feed them back through the, through the two holes here. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and tap, the, tap these two uh, tabs in place.
can do a little bit better. There we go. When you're soldering, you, what we always were taught uh, back in the day in school was you have like little mounds. They want to look like little ant hills. So at the top, there's going to be a nice uh, peak, and then it's going to flow nice at the bottom. It almost looks like this. So um, we're looking for Q-tips. Clean up. Oh, clean up uh, the area that I just soldered. Okay, turn off the exhaust fan, don't need that anymore, unplug it, and then I'm going to plug in the AC adapter for the bows here, everything to the side, so here we go, this guy is back in the place here, we are reading 33 um, microfarads at 63 volts, now I'm just going to go ahead and just set this right here and I'm going to go ahead and feed power into the board turn the light off here Oops, turn the light off and let's see if this resolved the issue all right make sure got everything good and all right so now it's plugged in now it says once I hit the radio we should see this light come on look at that we're getting radio station but now the thing is are we getting output so let me bring in my portable that's that's freaking awesome this is the only thing that was wrong with it um so let me get my portable speaker here and just get it plugged in and see if we are getting output all right so here's my portable speaker here All right, right now I am done with the soldering station, so I can go ahead and unplug this. Uh, I'm gonna plug in the AC adapter to the circuit, or to my speaker, turn it on, and I'm gonna hook up to, I'm gonna hook up the external antenna for this uh, unit here, so we can get some uh, FM stations in clearly. Let's go ahead and power him on. There we go. Let's turn down the volume. Come on. All right, so we got the audio going in, and now we just got to find the output speakers from here. And on the back here, we have fixed speakers, so we're going to plug it into these guys here. Again, you got to be very careful. This board is live, making sure you're not touching anything metal. I'll just plug in that guy here. All right, so now let's find a local station here. Uh, let's turn this down some more. Let's tune it into one of my favorite stations, Country. Can't play it long due to copyright protection, but long enough so we know that we are getting audio output. Go ahead and turn it on. There we go. We are getting audio output here. We're at 99.5, and we got output here from the radio station. All right. So there you have it. So this was a successful repair. And I just want to go over why it's important when you're working on the circuit board. Let me go ahead and turn this guy off. Um, why it's important when, you know, looking at schematics. And because, again, this came off of the manufacturer line. So somebody in line, you know, assembling these guys put the wrong value in there. Now it wasn't caught right away. Um, and or or. Or it could have been prior, you know, previously repaired, but it didn't look like it because the capacitor had, had, you know, didn't look like it was replaced um, because um, of, you could tell when something's been resoldered or a component because of the shininess of your solder. Um, this looks like, you know, um, it, you know, it wasn't replaced, but again, I could be wrong. If it was replaced, it was replaced with the wrong voltage uh, value, had the right, um, uh, 
resistance value, the capacitor value, but it had the wrong voltage value. Um, like it says, and like it says, I have the schematics on this, and it clearly stated it needed 33 microfarads at 63 volts, 63 or higher. And again, as you could see, by changing that one component, it brought life back to this unit here. So there are reasons why, you know, when an engineer develops these circuit boards, why it's required certain values and to follow those values. Now, uh, these capacitors, like I've, I've discussed in the past, are polarity sensitive. So one side is negative, one side is positive. Now, there are capacitors that I work with that the polarity doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which orientation you put them in. There's no right or wrong way because it's going to pass through either way, fine. But these, you have to make sure negative is on the negative side, positive is on the positive side. And if you don't, you're going to get a nice little pop in the circuit. So there you have it. I just wanted to do a video on uh, the repair here and show you the quick ways of how I troubleshoot and how what I thought the, of the problem was and how I changed out clearly, you know, uh, backed up my... my uh, my um, um I don't know, I'm losing words here. Uh, my my what, what I can, what I thought the what the what I thought the problem was. So by changing up, it it did verify that I was correct. So there you have it. Um, you know, if you like, you know, share this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, YouTube channel. I'm also I also started a TikTok uh, account. I don't have any videos up on there yet, but I did um, jump the gun and I did go to TikTok. So if you want to go ahead and follow me on there, I'm going to start uploading repair videos. They can't be long, but they're going to be like cut down in, in you know segments. But also I'm going to show some of my other uh, projects I'm working on with my uh, robotics and everything else. So yeah, if you want to show, you know, throw me a follow, that'd be awesome but definitely on my YouTube channel. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.